Hello and welcome to Energy System Screencast 2. Today's focus is going to be looking at um, the second energy system, which is called the glycolytic system. Now, last week uh, or last screencast, we had a look at um, the role of ATP, the energy currency of the body, our only usable energy source. Uh, and then we had a look at the process of ATP breakdown. And then we had a look at how when ATP broke down, how we use PC uh, in a coupled reaction to resynthesize our ATP to give us one ATP, which would allow us to work very high intensity for um, zero to 10 seconds. That was our last system. We looked at the advantage disadvantages of that so if we just keep ourselves there then if you think we use this high intensity um, energy or ATP resynthesis from the ATP PC system that gives us up to 10 seconds now at that point as we looked at when we evaluated um, the ATP PC system PC runs out okay at 10 seconds so at that point our energy system or our, our, our system to resynthesize ATP switches to the glycolytic system. So by the end of the screencast, what I'm going to look for you to be able to do um, is objective one there. So you're looking to be able to explain how the glycolytic system provides energy for sporting activities. Uh, and lesson content will have a look at how you evaluate the glycolytic system, the advantages and disadvantages. So just to like to keep us where we are in regard to our scheme or sequence of work. Um, if you have a look onto here, I've kind of just um, attempted to put this here. So if you look, we're looking at anaerobic physiology. We've looked at those anaerobic anaerobic muscle fibers here we've looked at the ATPPC system which remember gives us the anaerobic a high intensity energy for, for up to 10 seconds now when 10 seconds finishes we then switch to our glycolytic system so glycolytic is our second anaerobic energy system so so look then so I'll put it up there just to remind you that it's the anaerobic uh, system, the second anaerobic energy system. Uh, so what we need to have a look at now then is, and I, I think, you know, if the ATPPC as, as a first topic could be quite uh, difficult at times, but now you look at it and think, well, once we get rid of that phosphocreatine store, once it's run out uh, when we do an explosive action, what is the next fuel we use? And I think it's quite helpful now because you're thinking this um, kind of energy system is called the glycolytic system. So it's a good start point to think that, you know, the fuel that is the located, or the fuel that we use is glycogen. Now to keep that, to make that even more simple, if you just think of the fact that, you know, when you eat pasta, when you eat bread, these are examples of carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates are stored in our muscles and liver as glycogen, okay? Uh, this system takes place in muscle sarcoplasm, sorry. They're stored as glycogen in our muscles and livers. Now, what happens as a part of that is, as we've looked at with all fuels so far, we looked at ATP, we looked at PC as a fuel, okay? In order for them to be broken down, an enzyme has to act on them. In this case, in the glycolytic system, glycogen, our fuel, which is stored in our muscle, is broken down by the enzyme GPP. Now, this in, in its kind of proper term, it's called glycogen phosphorylase. Now, you have to know GPP, but I think in the first instance, as always with an enzyme, it's useful to just write it down so you know where the GPP comes from. And it helps here because you remember glycogen, and then you've just got to remember ATP had A's, then it had creatine kinase. Now we've got the, uh, the enzyme that breaks down glycogen. It's glycogen phosphorylase. Always has an A's as a suffix, and then it's got the kind of fuel usually at the start in most cases, not all as we'll see in a second. Now, as you can see, glycogen is a kind of complex carbohydrate broken down by uh, the enzyme GPP, glycogen phosphorylase, into glucose. Now, glucose at this point, now glucose is actually the fuel that is, is going to give us our ATP. So when we get down from glycogen into glucose, okay, when we break it down into that glucose, then what happens is another enzyme will break down glucose. Now, this is the most important reaction in the glycolytic system. Okay, so the process of glucose being broken down starts by the enzyme phosphofructokinase or PFK breaking it down. Okay, so it breaks down glucose, phosphofructokinase is the enzyme that does it, and then it breaks it down into something called pyruvic acid or pyruvate. Now, this process of glucose being broken down by PFK into pyruvic acid is actually called anaerobic glycolysis, okay? It's the breakdown of glycogen and glucose without oxygen present. And when this happens, this process of glucose into pyruvic acid, this is where we resynthesize to ATP. Now, the good thing on this is you don't need to know the kind of exact process, the kind of resynthesis of this. You need to know that by glucose being broken down by PFK into pyruvic acid, there's two ATP released. Now, at this point, 
when our two ATP have been synthesized, we th there's an issue. Now, what the issue is is because this is an anaerobic system. When we get this pyruvic acid broken down, when the f due to the fact it's anaerobic and there's no oxygen present, this kind of uh, stimulates another enzyme and I suppose it is it's the enzyme that you don't really want and the enzyme is called lactate dehydrogenase or LDH and LDH basically is the enzyme when it notices that there's no oxygen present and pyruvic acid has been formed it breaks it down into um, something called lactic acid which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with so what we have then pyruvic acid when there's no oxygen present is broken down by the enzyme LDH or lactate dehydrogenase okay to give us lactic acid now lactic acid causes us big big problems it can also help us at times but when we do not have oxygen okay lactic acid can have a negative effect it's what you would consider a harmful byproduct okay during um, exercise so when lactic acid is reached or when we start to have lactic acid there is a cycle of events that will cause us problems and cause us to stop and lead us to have fatigue now at the moment let's just make sure we kind of got this before I start looking at those chain of events that happens from here. We look in here at thinking, right, takes place in the muscle sarcoplasm. Glycogen is our main fuel. Okay, so glycogen is stored in our muscle cells via carbohydrates, and then it's broken down by GPP into glucose. Glucose broken down by PFK into pyruvic acid. Now, once this happens, this releases 2ATP, and that process, for those who I know there are people who will be interested in that, is the process of anaerobic glycolysis, the breakdown of glycogen and glucose without oxygen. Now, when pyruvic acid forms and there's no oxygen present, Lactate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that notices that and it's stimulated to break down pyruvic acid into lactic acid. Now, that is where you get the majority of your marks, okay, for this. And talking about those breakdowns, the enzymes that cause it to happen. Um, and the question always people will ask is, you know, do, what would you get marks for an exam with regard to enzymes? You get marks for just the initials. But again, as I said, I'll repeat from previous, just make you make a note um, of these to, to, to start with. Now, I'm sure you've all experienced lactic acid. Uh, lactic acid, then, uh, we need to be able to unlock a sequence of events just to explain why it is harmful when there's no oxygen present. So if we look at it then, um, these are the things that happen. So first thing, lactic acid, lactate, basically accumulates in our blood. Okay, and this leads to an increase in blood acidity. Now, when there is an increase in blood acidity, this has a knock on effect, okay, and it decreases the blood pH. Now, when the blood pH is decreased, this then denatures enzymes that can break down our fuels in order to give us energy now the kind of the net effect of this is that we have fatigue or we experience fatigue and the term associated when the fatigue stops us from exercising okay is known as obla okay or onset of blood lactate accumulation at this point we will have to stop slow down breathe in and get oxygen so i'm sure you can start to see the big disadvantage of the glycolytic system is lactic acid and the reason why lactic acid causes us to stop okay or stops us from performing effectively is because of these knock-on effects these really are the higher order things here um, your job for tomorrow is to make sure that you feel confident breaking down the glycolytic system it's what it says on the tin glycolytic glycogen we need to know enzyme product enzyme product ATP and then enzyme product down to here so next is a harmful byproduct our job is to make sure we can do that now just to summarize um, you know in terms of our summary framework I'll put this up on the next slide um, things you'll be looking for then as always you need to know the following key things so hopefully you'll start to pick some of these things out or maybe what I didn't uh, give specific times I'll show you those now so the fuel then uh, the key fuel that they want to be honest is glucose okay so glucose is the key thing because the breakdown of glucose that anaerobic glycolysis that process where the ATP is produced that's the key fuel but glycogen is also accepted but it must be with glucose and not at the expense of glucose so on top of that is it aerobic or anaerobic pretty straightforward it's an anaerobic energy system okay always a good thing because it doesn't require oxygen to break down glycogen and glucose um, time okay the time that is given for this energy system it picks up where the ATP PC system left off so 10 seconds up to three minutes the energy yield as you saw before is the number of ATP so in this case it gives us double the ATP PC system but it's still a low ATP yield of two uh, by products 
Okay, at this time we have an extremely harmful byproduct that is lactic acid. Uh, complexity, now the reactions for this system are extremely simple, okay, as you saw. And site of reaction, muscle sarcoplasm, and sporting examples there. We're looking for these really high intensity anaerobic actions that, you know, will take place in that 10 second to 3 minute period. So, I put a sporting example uh, from athletics, so 400 meter uh, sprint. You might remember that from when we looked at uh, 2A fibers. And then if we had a look at recovery runs in hockey, football, um, uh, rugby, you look at those sports, basketball, turnover runs when you have to run for a longer than 10 seconds, but still at really high intensity. Okay, so there's your evaluation points. Please make good notes on this. Uh, thank you very much.